Sometimes people who haven't taken calculus think that calculus is a really difficult subject to learn. And sometimes people who are in calculus have a really hard time learning the actual calculus. But the truth is, it's not about the calculus. Most of the time, the struggles come from a weakness in a subject known as pre-calculus. So what is pre-calculus? I used to have this friend on the internet a long time ago who really despised the name. He was a really smart guy and we used to hang out in a chat room. And the reason he hated the name is because pre-calculus is just basically a bunch of different math topics thrown together and they decide to call it pre-calculus. This pre-calculus book is special for a few reasons. So for one, it was written by James Stewart along with Redlin and Watson. And yes, this is the same James Stewart who wrote the book Calculus, which is super popular and used all over the world. Also, this book actually contains calculus in it. So even though the book is called Pre-Calculus, it actually contains calculus. It's not a lot, but it's enough to at least spark your curiosity. This book contains tons of mathematics. It starts off with fundamentals, then it goes on and discusses functions, polynomial and rational functions. So this is something that you would cover in say a college algebra class, exponential and logarithmic functions, and then enter trigonometry. So you can actually learn trig from this book as well. It starts off with the unit circle, the trig functions, and some trig graphs. Chapter six is more trig. Seven is even more trig, the super important identities. And then eight jumps to systems of equations and inequalities. It even talks about matrices. Chapter nine is on conics and polar coordinates. And then 10 is on sequences and series including some induction. 11 is on counting and probability. And then chapter 12 gives you a short preview of calculus, which I think is really cool. I think it's great when you're taking a course like pre-calc or trig, or maybe a combined course, and you get to see limits. You actually get to see some calculus in your pre-calc course. This book has really good examples and they're very standard examples. So if you're taking a class in college, this can work as a great supplement. For example, here, they give you the shadow that a giant redwood tree casts. And they ask you to find the height of the tree given the angle of elevation of the sun. This is a classic problem that is done in pretty much any trig course you take. And so by having this book, you have extra examples that you can use to help you in your course. This is from the section on partial fraction decomposition. So we're given a rational function and the question says, find the partial fraction decomposition. So basically we have to break this up into lots of little functions that are simpler to work with. And then here it goes through the solution and it uses a method that is extremely powerful in calculus and even in courses like differential equations. The method is that of equating coefficients and then they give you the answer down here. So great book for preparation for future courses like differential equations as well. These are the exercises for the section on real zeros of polynomials. So you can see there are tons of problems to work through so it looks like there's 32 on this page. I'm gonna turn the page. Wow, look at that, so many examples. It's just completely ridiculous. 95 problems in just that one section. Cool, it talks about the cubic formula. You also have answers to all of the odd numbered problems. And one of the things I like about this book is notice that it's giving you solutions to the trigonometric identities. I have other pre-calculus books that don't do this. So this is a huge plus for anyone using this to learn trigonometry. I also really like how it talks about famous mathematicians. Here it talks about Sir Isaac Newton. It's really fun when you're working through math and then you turn the page and you find some like historical information about a mathematician. I just gotta give it a whiff here. It just, yeah, smells really nice. The book itself is pretty thick, but honestly, it's a little bit thin for the amount of material that it contains, right? It's got algebra, it's got trigonometry, and it even has a little bit of calculus and you know, it could be thicker. So I think they did a really good job writing this book. I mean, it just contains tons of information. The first part of the calculus it discusses is basically just finding limits numerically and graphically. So if you were to take a calculus one course in college, this is probably where you would start on the first day of class. You'd basically be making tables of values to approximate limits or looking at the graph of a function to actually find the limit. Here's a really good example of a problem you might see in the first day of a Calculus One class. They basically give you a graph and they ask you to find the various limits. This problem is actually really simple. In fact, let me just do my best here to explain it really quickly. 
So for example, part b, we have to find the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x. So as x gets really, really close to the number 1, what is the y value getting close to? Well, it looks like it's getting close to negative 1. You might say there's a hole there at negative 1, so it doesn't exist. It doesn't matter. We only care about what happens to the y values when x gets close to 1. We don't actually care about what happens at x equals 1. So even though there's a hole here when x gets really, really close to 1, the y values get closer to negative 1. So the answer to part b is negative 1. 12.2 is when it really gets good because you're finding limits algebraically. Again, something you definitely see in a Calculus 1 course, and usually you're tested on this on your first exam in Calc 1. The nice thing about this section is that usually lots of test questions come from a section like this because there's so much variety in the examples. So this is a really good section to really sharpen your calculus skills with. 12.4 is really cool because they talk about limits at infinity and limits of sequences. Limits of sequences are something that you usually study in calculus too, but Stewart decides to include it in his book here, which is really, really cool. 12.5 talks about the area problem. This is something that basically leads to what's called definite integration. So you see here, we have a graph and we have rectangles. So this is an approximation to the area. If you add up the area of all of these rectangles, you'll get an approximation to the area under the curve of this graph. Obviously, the more rectangles you have, the better approximation, as you can see here by the pictures. And if you let the number of rectangles approach infinity, you basically get the area under the curve. And we call that the definite integral of a function. So it's really a precursor to the ideas that you're going to see in a calculus class. And I think they do a great job in this book. Let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of this book. So pros in my mind are that this book has very standard content. So the material in this book goes along really well with what's being taught in college courses today. So if you're taking a course called, say, College Algebra, this is going to have everything you need. If you're taking a course called Pre-Calculus, this is probably going to have everything you need. If you're taking a course called Trigonometry, again, this is probably going to have everything you need. Another pro in my mind is that the examples are really clean and the explanations are just good. So it's a good book for self-study. And another pro is you get tons of exercises which are very standard. So again, if you're taking a course, this is going to coincide really well with what you're learning in your classes. Also, you have solutions to all of the odd-numbered problems. So what are the cons of this book? Well, I can't really think of a con other than perhaps the price. Buying this book brand new might cost, you know, a considerable amount of money, which is usually the case for books like this that are current and new and being used today in colleges and universities around the world. So typically these books can cost some money, but a book like this will last you for the rest of your life. This copy is used and, you know, you can see it's kind of rough, but it's still holding up well. It kind of reminds me of my copy of Stewart's Calculus, which is also really old and beaten and I've had it for years and it's still holding up pretty well. So. The construction of this book, it's pretty good considering the amount of abuse that this book has had. Overall, I think this is a really solid math book, and I'm pretty sure there's a newer edition out now. I will try to leave a link in the description. I will look as soon as I finish making this video and check it out if you're interested. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and as always, if you are not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Good luck and take care.